in that concept of you know, children getting to the point where they create definitions, first it's definitions. And when we create definitions, again, what happens is, is the experience then goes dormant and the label takes place. So we go, tree. I'm busy telling the tree what it is rather than doing what a child does, which is, what is it? And when I say, what is it? I now experience that thing in this moment going like this. You know? Okay? That's a whole different thing than tree. You know, a long time ago when I was two, I felt a tree, I smelled a tree, I rubbed up against a tree. Don't need to do that again. You know? <laughs> so that's how it starts. But then we create concepts, identities, beliefs, and they get more complex than just labels. And all those labels come together and we close ourselves off into this reality where we're telling reality what it is rather than being in reality. But here's the trick. There are beliefs that are more helpful than others. But ultimately, every belief needs to be set aside in order to be in the experience of I am infinite, eternal, and whole. But there are beliefs that are helpful to getting to the experience of your infinite, eternal, and whole. One belief that's helpful in getting to the experience is believing that you are. But ultimately, the belief that you are infinite, eternal, and whole has to be given up in order to actually get to the experience of I am infinite, eternal, and whole. That's that weird paradox. So, someone going around, you know, presenting you are infinite, you know, uh, uh, here's, here's what a yogi should believe, you know. You know, whatever. Here's a belief that could be helpful to get you to a place where you experience no beliefs. You know, but any belief is, you know, ultimately a dogma. And, you know, one of the things that I like about, you know, how can a person be, be passionate and fully engaged and even willing to die for their beliefs and yet not be dogmatic? Isn't that a weird question? Like, how can we? Is that possible to do? And I would like to say yes. And the way that works for me is this. The ultimate belief I hold is this. I don't know what the hell is going on here. I don't know who you are. I don't know what I am. I don't know where we're going. I don't know where we are. I don't know. So that's the main thing. I don't know. Now, knowing that I don't know, I'm going to make my best wild-ass guess. That's all I can do. I'm going to make my best wild-ass guess in this moment. And my best wild-ass guess is we're infinite, eternal, and whole, and I'm going to live that way. That's my best wild-ass guess. But... I don't care, you know, because if I'm wrong and I get to the pearly gates and, you know, let's say, for example, here's, here's another example of the way that might work. I believe in reincarnation. It's a fun belief, okay? Truthfully, I haven't died and come back, you know, but I believe I have, but the truth is, you know, we can't prove that, right? So, and nor can we prove it about anybody. So, truth is, we really don't know about the belief in reincarnation. There can be lots of proof, blah, 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 lots of stuff about it. I like the belief. And there are many experiences in my life that I can't seem to integrate without that belief. And it helps me integrate my internal world. And it helps me believe I'm infinite, eternal, and whole. Now, um, that's cool, but the truth is that belief isn't, you know, necessary in order to have the experience of your infinite, eternal, and whole. You don't need the belief you're you believe in reincarnation to get enlightened. Many people who don't believe in reincarnation experience enlightenment. So, totally unnecessary. The question is, is the belief helpful or not? And a lot of that is up to you, because I've seen the belief in reincarnation used as a very separating belief. Like, for example, especially this was early on. Well, I, in a past life, was a Queen Nefertiti, and you were one of my subjects. <laughs> you know, like, okay, well, thanks so much. You know. You know, or, you know, the internal belief, which happens to a lot of people, and just ask yourself if you're on this thing, I'm an old soul, and you're not. <laughs> Sorry. I've been around many lifetimes, and you're probably here for the first time. I can forgive you or, you know, be, be with you, be patient while you learn. You know, so I mean, any belief can be used, you know, to be a separating belief. The question is, as we become more established in witness consciousness, the beliefs are simply vrittis. How do I want to use this belief? How will this belief be purposeful? 
And most beliefs are like this. Not most beliefs, but a lot of beliefs are like this. The big ones, the ones that we can't see, are indoctrinated, they're habitual, and they're unconscious. So we say, what octopus on my face? There's no octopus on my face. <laughs> and the process of yoga is establishing witness consciousness, so all of a sudden there's, oh my God. I was, oper I was, I was operating through that? Wow. Here, it's just true. You know, here, it's like, oh my God. So that's the process of establishing witness consciousness. Don't underestimate, you know, again, increasing awareness in the body and in the breath and in the thought because eventually you'll be helping people go, wow. And the moment it's here, then we have choice. We can say, you know what, that isn't very helpful. I got that from my mother and it's not a good thing. I'm going to choose, and eventually, I'm going to choose, you know, and when I have to, because we have to get up. We have to believe there's a floor. We do, in order to go, you know, and really, and I've had experiences where I've really not believed there was a floor. <laughs> so, so we have to create beliefs in order to operate on this physical reality. Did that answer your question? <laughs> so at the same sense, in terms of dogma, ultimately, how can someone be dogmatic if you really don't believe that you know what's going on? And that's why Gandhi was so amazing. He really knew he didn't know. And yet he was able to talk with people about their beliefs and really respect and say, what are your beliefs? You know, and how do they work for you? Wow, here's my beliefs. You know, when someone's not dogmatic in that way, they can have discussions about beliefs without the attachment to the belief. But that still doesn't mean that they're not passionate. I am so passionate about my beliefs that I would be willing to die. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bet on them. And again, if I get to the pearly gates and God says, Devarshi, you were so wrong. One life. That was it. I still go, no problem. I chose the belief that helped me the best. I still say, I was kidding myself the whole time about reincarnation, but whoopee. It was fun. So choose your beliefs with, with some deliberateness, you know, and operate through them. Be willing to change them and best get to the point where you let them all go.